Hey everybody out there, welcome back to the Dr. Greg Jones Optimization Academy and specifically the crash course portion of the Optimization Academy. It has been a very long time since I've recorded a podcast because I've been working really, really hard to build this fancy podcast studio and this is my first podcast in here. Hopefully the sound looks good, the uh, video looks good, but I can't wait to get into it. So for this podcast, uh, I want to talk about a really, really cool peptide called GHK Copper. Now, GHK Copper, for those of you in the peptide world, I've probably heard of it as a good peptide for hair growth and skin and aesthetics, but this peptide is powerful, man, and how I kind of got back into it because you know we, we prescribe it a lot here a lot more so again for hair growth and people looking to reduce wrinkles and i've used it for wound healing and decreasing inflammation a lot of other cases but kind of what got me into it i was preparing a presentation for the peptide world congress shout out to ssrp uh in malibu a few weeks ago and as i was looking for peptides that you know going against these hallmarks of aging and it's just like hey i know ghk copper is a good peptide for decreasing inflammation and reducing oxidative stress and i really got into some of the research and the literature on this peptide and it kind of reminded me how awesome and incredible this peptide is. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to spend a few minutes and talk about the benefits of GHK Copper. So without further ado, let's talk about GHK Copper. So what is GHK Copper? It's a tripeptide. What does that mean? It's a sequence of three amino acids. So that's glycine, histidine, and lysine. The G, the H, and the K. Don't know why lysine is a K. But it is what it is. So GHK copper is mainly found in our plasma, but also is found in our urine and our saliva. Now, as we age, like most other things, we get less of it, right? I think there's about a 60% decrease in GHK levels from the time we're 20 to the time we're 60. So pretty steep drop off. Not all of it's gone away, but a lot of it is. Now, what's important about GHKK is that it has a high affinity for binding to copper ions. Now, copper, if you recall from your biochemistry classes or if you taking any physiology and all that good stuff, you know, copper is very important to our bodies, right? So copper is good for reducing inflammation, very good for reducing oxidative stress, very good for circulation. Copper is essential for wound healing, for uh, increasing our generation or regeneration of connective tissue. So that's healing your skin, hair, bones, et cetera, et cetera. So copper is a very essential uh, element in our body, but again, not as efficient, not as prevalent as we get older. So this binding of GHK to copper is essential for its function. That's what drives it, right? So if you're out there looking for research or if you're, uh, you know, prescribing as a, as a practitioner, just make sure that you're giving your patients GHK copper and not GHK by itself to make sure it is more effective. So let's dive into the benefits of this peptide GHK copper. So let's start with skin, right? Because that's where it gets a lot of its publicity from. A lot of people know it as a skin peptide and a lot of serums and creams out there and a lot of us uh, estheticians and kind of beauty skincare products, right? So as for skin, GHK copper has a lot of great properties, right? It can tighten the skin, reduce wrinkles, reduce hyperpigmentation, help your skin repair, and actually kind of correct and repair damage from uh, photo damage, right? So being out in the sun too much, GHK copper can help with that. Now, how it does this, it synthesizes uh, two very essential pro uh, proteins for skin health. That's elastin and collagen. And so these proteins, it's elastin and collagen, are very important for skin elasticity, that whole elastin, right? And firmness of the skin. Uh, GHK copper also stimulates the production of fibroblasts and keratinocytes, right? So these are the cells that help your skin repair and regenerate. And also GHK copper can improve angiogenesis, right? So that's the increase of new blood vessels. So this is getting more oxygen and nutrients to the skin, helping that skin glow by getting more blood flow there. How I like to kind of explain is imagine your skin is like a, an old building, a historic building, right? A classic building. And over time, that building just starts to get worn down and worn out. And think of GHK Copper as coming in and repairing that building. So restoring that building to its beautiful facade, what it was before. So like that analogy, right? Because we all know buildings have, have gotten worn down and dilapidated. And think of GHK Copper coming in and giving you that makeover and restoring that beauty. So next, let's dive into GHK Copper as something to help with hair, right? So when it comes to that, uh, GHK Copper is very very effective in stimulating the production of proteins necessary for hair growth so VEGF or vascular endothelial growth factor fibroblast growth factor and also nerve growth factor right so restoring those proteins necessary for hair growth kind of a you know I don't call it sneaky a lot of people don't realize that inflammation in the, around the hair follicles can cause hair loss and reduce hair growth so we're going to talk more about GHK copper as an anti-inflammatory, but that ability to reduce inflammation around the hair follicles helps this peptide with your hair growth. GHK copper also improves your hair follicle size, right? So getting bigger hair follicles and not only improving the size of those hair follicles, but increasing blood flow, right? So that, like we talked about with skin, also with hair, better blood flow, better oxygen and nutrients to the places where your body needs it most. So 
again, you know me, these analogies, right? So I always think about GHK Copper as a, as a garden, right? The garden's out there withering, hasn't been watering in a while, the grass is dying, looking all brown and, and, and you know, tethered and weathered. And here comes GHK Copper acting as a gardener, right? So kind of like watering that garden, planting, watering that garden, planting new seeds and getting that you know, beautiful foliage, if you will, back to uh, where you want it to be. So next, let's talk about GHK Copper for wound healing, right? This is where I really love this peptide in that case. So what it really does, think about this GHK Copper as attracting your repair cells. It's called a chemo attractant, right? So you have these, these repair cells, macrophages, mast cells. Your body needs to get to the site of an injury, right? Uh, needs to get to the site of an injury. So think of GHK Copper as attracting those healing proteins to where your body needs them for those healing cells. Uh, just like in hair and skin, it increases collagen, but also another compound called a glycoaminoglycan. Think of that as scaffolding, right? So basically, it's for something to build and repair, you need, it needs to have a foundation, a scaffold, right? So the GAGs, those glycoaminoglycogens, and collagen act as that scaffold for your bones to repair. Again, just like hair and skin, you get that angiogenesis, more blood flow, more oxygen where your body needs it. And what's really cool about this peptide, it actually sends a feedback signal as it's healing for your body to get rid of the damaged tissue, right? So it's giving you getting rid of that old damaged tissue and as it restores and repairs and regenerates new tissue. So really cool. So reduces scars, right? So that's where scars come from, right? As your body's healing, the old tissue kind of gets in this weird kind of um, uh, formation. GHK Copper helps to prevent that. So now getting to some of the most important or uh, what I really love about this peptide as well is the ability to reduce inflammation. And it does that in a few different ways, right? So first, it's going to decrease the production of these inflammatory proteins, specifically IL-1 beta and interleukin-1 beta. So GHK copper reduces inflammation by reducing the production of these pro-inflammatory proteins, specifically IL-1 beta or interleukin-1 beta and tumor necrosis factor alpha. It also inhibits another uh, essential protein in the production of inflammation called NF-kappa-beta. So get ready for this mouthful, nuclear factor kappa light chain enhancer of B-cells pretty fancy way of this protein actually uh, stimulates our inflammatory pathways. And not just our inflammatory pathways, but those pathways that produce those harmful cytokines. GHK copper also decreases the level of transforming growth factor beta-1. This protein also is uh, very harmful in producing excessive inflammation, actually remodeling tissue. Uh, so it helps reduce inflammation, kind of like think of a sink. Think of a sink, right? So if you got a leaky sink, that's your body putting out too much inflammation. We're going to stop this two ways. So there's that valve under the sink. That's your NF kappa beta. And actually the uh, turning off the knob on the faucet, right? Those are those inflammatory proteins, IL-1 beta and the uh, TNF alpha. Another really, really cool thing that uh, this JHK copper does is a potent antioxidant peptide. So by uh, how it does that, it activates another protein in our body. If you've heard about NAD and anti-aging, you know about sirtuins, right? So JHK copper specifically activates sirtuin-1, and that helps your body with the production of over 14, or might be exactly 14, antioxidant genes, right? So putting out a lot of antioxidants that your body needs. So another uh, great thing that JHK copper does to help with oxidative stress and reducing oxidative stress goes down to copper, right? Back to copper. So if you don't have enough copper, then you don't have enough of a very important antioxidant called superoxide dismutase, right? So by improving your copper levels, better SOD, better antioxidant. Now this is important when it comes to anti-aging because oxidative stress is one of those factors and one of those things that actually damages your DNA. So if you have an excess in oxidative stress and excess of free radicals, you're exposed to a greater risk of damaging your DNA, accelerating the aging process. You know, a lot of really cool stuff with GHK copper. And another thing is a very versatile peptide. So GHK copper can be a subcutaneous injection and GHK copper can be formulated or compounded as a cream or a gel to help with healing and also skincare. It can also be used as a foam dropper and also shampoos to help with hair growth, right? So a lot of different options depending on what you and your practitioner decide to use for this peptide. Now, almost at the home stretch, just like any other peptide, it's important to get your peptides from a reputable source. That reputable source would be a compound pharmacy via a licensed practitioner, right? And also, you know, not just, you know, just make sure you consult with your provider as well before you start this peptide. Really don't have many side effects with it, but at the end of the day, you want to make sure you're levels are okay. Make sure your zinc levels are balanced before you get started with this peptide. All right, I think we have done enough. So at the end of the day, this is a very, very powerful peptide, a very amazing peptide, and I don't think enough people are using it. That's why I'm here talking into this camera talking about it. So that being said, thank you for listening. I'm excited to start recording again, putting out more content, be on the lookout for the next uh, podcast. I think I want to talk about um, 
I think I'm gonna talk about peptides for muscle building. That's the other presentation that I gave, and I think it's one that I know a lot of people look for peptides for improving their body composition and lean body mass. I wanna dive into that. Again, thank you for listening. Be on the lookout. Please subscribe. Please share. Please tell everybody about this podcast. Uh, please subscribe. Please share. Please tell your friends and family about this podcast. And I can't wait to see you all again. This has been Dr. Jones and the Optimization Academy Crash Course.